look to the Lord in prayer. Eternal gracious Lord, we thank you, we honor and bless you for this day, God. We thank you, God, for this first Sunday in Advent, God. We thank you, God, that we're sitting here in anticipation, God, for your coming, God. We, we thank you for the bright sunshine. We thank you for your unconditional grace and mercy. Now, Lord, I pray that you may show up and show out in this house on this day at this very moment, God. God, someone needs to hear a word from you. So, God, I pray right now that you may give me articulation of speech and clarity of mind, O oh God, to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. May everyone say amen in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Coming from the Gospel of Mark, the ninth chapter, looking at verse 14. So at verse 14, going all the way through verse 29, I do apologize for the length of the scripture. But that is one of the one of the no-nos while I was there taught in seminary not to give a long scripture, but we need to have to understand the content and the context. So coming out of Mark chapter 9, starting at verse 14, it reads, And he came to the disciples, and when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and scribes disputed with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed, and running to him, greeted him. And when he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered, he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell down on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the evil spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This time come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. May the Lord bless to the reading of word. For just a few moments, with your thoughts and prayers, I want to simply preach on the topic, Simply Believe. Simply Believe. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, or neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Simply, Simply believe. believe. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor, or neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Simply, Simply believe. believe. Amen. Simply Believe. My friends, it is hard believing in God to do what God can only do when our back is up against the wall. I don't care how holy you are, how many times you come to church, when the situation in your life seems hopeless and helpless, believing in God to show up is a hard thing. It's easy for many people because many people have walked with the Lord, but sometimes some of us are still struggling with the Lord. Sometimes some of us are struggling to see that God can make a way out of no way. Sometimes it's hard for us to get an understanding, to get a full grasp of God because we come to church Sunday after Sunday. We say our prayers. We do what we're supposed to do. But sometimes we're struggling with this thing called belief. It's one thing to believe in what we see, but to believe in someone or something that we don't see, that we can't touch, that we can't feel it is all of a sudden difficult. I don't know who I'm talking to, but oftentimes, my friends, it's hard for us to believe in God because sometimes God doesn't show up on our terms, but rather he shows up on his terms. And if you like, most people, we get agitated, we get frustrated, and we get impatient because we want God to show up 
on our time, but God says, I'm not going to show up on your time, but rather, I'm going to show up on my time. It's hard when we go through life and life seems unfair because when life seems unfair, it makes us question God. It makes us ask ourselves, God, are you still there? Let me help illustrate this. Just think about over your life when God did not do what you wanted him to do and God took you another direction. Just imagine how you felt during that particular time when life did not deal with you a good man, when you thought you were doing one thing, but God took you down a different alley, took you down a different road. You didn't feel God at the moment. You said, God, I have to submit God. It's only unto you. It's hard sometimes dealing with life when life seems unfair. Let's talk about what's unfair. It's unfair that people who don't come to church, who don't go to Bible study, who don't have an act of prayer, like get all the blessings. They get the better job. They get the better relationship. They get the more, they get more money. They get all the material things. It's hard believing in God when the world is unfair, when we have people dying in a war that we really don't even understand. It's hard believing in God when life seems unfair, when people walk out on us when people said that they would never leave us nor forsake us but yet they turn their back on they walk out the door and go one way and leave us stranded by us it's hard believing in God when someone gets promoted on the job they're lazy they don't do what they're supposed to do but yet they get the promotion they get more money and we're left asking God the question God why me you're not feeling me it's hard believing in God sometimes when we come to church and we're always playing by the rules we sit in not comfort seat and someone out comes in who doesn't serve the God but they all of a sudden get all the breakthroughs, get all the blessings we're scratching ourselves saying God I don't understand it. It's hard believing in God when the world tells us that there is no God at times because we see unemployment we see poverty, we see people struggling and suffering it's hard believing in a God saying God I thought you care about it. Just think back to 9-11 when the world was shaking and shook when the terrorists came and took down New York, took down Washington, D.C., and made an attempt to take down Pennsylvania Avenue. I mean, Pennsylvania, the world said, God, where are you? It's hard to believe in God when bad is happening around us. And, and in a real sense, when good is happening around us, on the flip side, we always believing in God. We have no problem giving the testimony. We got no problem clapping our hands and stomping our feet. But as soon as bad comes knocking on our door, all of a sudden we say, God, where are you, God? I don't understand it, God. I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, God. is not not fair. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you live this life long enough, you will go through some pain. You will face some trials and tribulations. You will question God. Say, God is not fair, God. I didn't ask for it. I didn't pray for it. I didn't plead for it. I didn't even put it on the altar call. But God, life isn't fair because God, life isn't fair. God, I need you to give me the strength to handle all. Do I have a witness in here that every now and again you need God to come through and give you the strength to carry on when the world is trying to knock you down and, and take you out. It ain't nothing but God. The only God can pick you up and start you on the right path because all of a sudden, my friends, we live through a life whereby we have to beat the odds. We have to beat something called impossible because we serve a God that says all things are possible. You missed your shout. Let me say that again. When the world says something is impossible, we serve a God who erases is the two left I am which is I am says take off I am take off I I like that take off I take off the M and use the rest of the word means possible you missed that he says take off I am and you left with the word possible you plus God equals possibility let me help you out I believe I, I love watching cooking shows Jason and I love watching this new show called restaurant impossible it's an interesting show whereby here comes a man who goes to a failing restaurant and in this failing restaurant he says give me two days and ten thousand dollars and I'm going to tear this restaurant down and build it back up. I'm going to take something that was in poverty and make it prosper. Ooh, I like that right there. I'm going to take something that was dead and I'm going to give it life. In other words, I'm going to have my 
like fruit and turn something that you thought was going down. Just give me two days and $10,000 and I'm going to do something called an impossibility. It's impossible in your sight, but because he is a professional, because he is an expert, that something turned impossible. So all of a sudden now, a restaurant possibility where I like the show because every time on the show, he goes to a neighborhood, Halima, he looks at the restaurant, he breaks down the cars, he talks to the staff, breaks them down, goes into the kitchen, rearranges the kitchen, rearranging the cooking and the food preparation. And within two days, all of a sudden, the restaurant is up, running brand new. It's all of a sudden crowded. It's looking bang on, smacking new. It's like they ain't a bag of chips, JP. He took something that was failing, and all of a sudden, he put it in his hands. And because it was in his hands, it's now prosperous. I like that because that helps me understand something when life has got you down, when you feel that life has dealt you a bad hand, all you got to do is turn it into the master's hand. You missed your shot on the show. I like it for on the show. You have restaurant on. He said, if your restaurant is failing, give me a call. He said, if your restaurant is failing, email me the information. Well, I got news for you. Glory came down and they said, whatever you're going through, all you got to do is fall down on your knees and call God because God will save you without coming to our text. Because as we look at our text, we find Jesus coming down from experiencing glory. He, he had just got transfigured with Moses and Elijah and he had the disciples there and they blew their minds. He just came down from a, a high time in the Lord and now he's coming down the hill to some drama. Isn't that something? Jesus just had a high time in the Lord and now he's coming down the hill to some drama. I'm talking to somebody on Sunday morning we have a high time in the Lord but when we leave those doors we all of a sudden go back home to some drama. But, but Jesus said, I'm not just coming back to any drama. I'm not going to allow the drama to affect me. But rather, I'm going to affect the drama. Let me back up and say that again. I'm not going to let the drama steal my joy. But I'm going to bring my power. And I'm going to override that drama. And bring that drama. I erase that drama. Why? Because of who Jesus is. So he comes down from the mountain running. And all of a sudden it says there was a dispute going on. And Jesus asked the question, what are you talking about? And the scribes and everybody were arguing, but I like what the Bible says. It says, one man came from the crowd. A father came from the crowd said, I was talking to your disciples about my son, about my baby boy, about the one who came from my loins. See, you're talking theology, but this man said, I'm talking about a family crisis going on. You missed that. Y'all talking doctrine and, and, and theology. I'm talking about a family situation. I got a son at home, and every time this demon, this, this, this death and dumb spirit overtakes my son, it breaks my heart because I'm seeing my son, my only son, I'm seeing an evil spirit come over him. It's not like my boy. I didn't ask for this. I'm coming with a legitimate concern. I'm not asking for you to give me money. I'm not asking for praise, but I'm simply coming with a legitimate concern. I have a baby boy and the spirit is overtaking my baby boy. I know it's not a good spirit, but rather it's a bad spirit. I've been praying for so long and it seems like every time I pray, nothing's really happening. I came to your disciples and rather than helping me, I got rejected time and time again. Can you imagine my brothers and sisters how this man felt? He's been praying for so long and it seems like his prayers have gone unanswered. He went to church folks and church folks couldn't do anything. He's been praying. He's been begging. Do I have anybody here today? You've been praying for somebody or for something and it seems like your prayers are going unanswered. It's like, hold on God. I've been asking everybody in Lonnie Donnie to pray for me. I'm going on the prayer call. I've done the internet. I've done text messaging, but nothing is happening. So I'm going to make it to church on Sunday morning. I got to the altar. I had a preacher straight out his hand, but even the preacher couldn't even help me. Hold on, Lord. This is part of your man. This is part of your woman. And nothing is happening, God. And then Jesus says, let me come down. And so the man spoke up because he said, this is my son. This is my baby. Boy, I'm not going to leave him up the chance because he's mine and because
son, he's mine. I'm just not going to accept anything from anybody. So, Jesus, you're in town. So, guess what, Jesus? Your disciples failed me. So, I'm bringing him to you because you're supposed to be the son of God. You're supposed to be Jehovah right here. So, I'm bringing him to you because I heard all about you and I know you're right here. I may have in my sanctified mind, no, you just came from glory. And because you came from glory, you can put some of this power and help my son because my son is acting crazy. And in some transcripts, they said, he said, my son is epileptic. And in other transcripts, he says, my son is a lunatic because the spirit makes him gnash his teeth. It throws him down. The father is powerless over this demonic attack. He's powerless. Friends can't help him. And he has to sit back and watch his son, his only son, fall down, suffer in pain. Any parent does not want their child being in pain no matter what they've done, no matter who they are. No parent wants to see their child in pain. And this man is saying, my son, my only son is hurting. My only son, I can't help. So Jesus, I'm going to bring him to you. And so Jesus says, all right, Jesus, no problem. He says, your disciples couldn't help me, so I'm bringing him to you. And then Jesus says, oh, faithless generation. Wait a minute. I just brought my son to you, Jesus. And you're saying, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? But I did my research. He wasn't talking to the man. He was talking to his disciples. He said, you've been with me. I've given you power, but even you don't even believe. Oh, let me say that again. He said, I've given you power. You spend time with me, but even you are operating in disbelief. And that's a shame, my friend, that we spend time with the Lord. We can profess to him, but yet we don't even believe. We can quote scripture. We can sing the songs. We know the prayers, but there are times when there is disbelief. And God is saying, I don't need that. Oh, faithless generation, how long must I be with you? And then he said, bring the boy to me. As soon as the boy came, Came, the spirit and the boy met Jesus. And any time you meet Jesus, you can no longer remain dormant. You have to act up and act crazy. Let me say that again. See, even an evil spirit could not contain himself. But oftentimes, Christian folks like to remain silent. Ooh, I said something there. See, many times the evil spirit said, I met Jesus and threw the boy down. But Jesus did not cast out the demonic spirit. Right then and there, he simply said, ask the father, let me ask you a question, man. How long has your son been like this? He said, from childhood. And I know he said, I got to say it because some of my disciples, but why he said, what sin did he commit? And every now and again, you ain't got to commit a sin. Some things just happen because it's a freak of nature. So he said, from childhood. And then the man said, okay, no problem. I'm asking you, Jesus, but now let me get He said, Jesus, if you can do anything, help him and help us. Can you imagine? He said, if you can do anything, if you can do anything, aren't you challenging the power of Jesus? Said, if you can do anything, you brought your son to him, and now you ask him if he can do anything. In other words, you must have believed who he was because he came to him. And now you say, if he can do anything, which lets me know when situations get under your skin, and a new situation always has never questioned your faith. That's why Jesus said, He said, I said, if you believe, all things are possible for those who believe. Oh, I like that right there. I can hang out right there. All things are possible for those who believe. In other words, if you stand in need of a miracle, I double dare you to believe. If you stand in need of a healing, I double dare you to believe. If you need to get your family member right, I double dare you to believe. If you need something better in your life, I double dare you to believe. Because the Bible says, if you believe all things, Okay. Now, 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 not some things, but, 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 but all things. In other words, I ain't going to waste my time in prayer if I don't believe. Amen. Okay, let me back up a second. Don't pray for me if you don't believe what you're praying for. Yes. That's why you got to be careful who prays with you and who prays for you. I'm feeling that right there. Because if they don't believe, they would have blocked your blessing. They say, no, nah, thank you very much. Go in your corner. I really don't need you right now. It's fine work on your faith. But as far as for me and my house, 
we're going to serve the Lord. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to pray right now because I believe in what I'm saying. If you don't believe it, if you have an ounce of doubt, keep it to yourself. Don't join me in prayer. Don't join with me in hand because I need to pray for you. But please don't pray for me if you're going to have some doubt. So the man came up to Jesus with tears in his eyes running. He says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. In other words, I believe a little bit, but God help me to get the rest of this unbelief out of me, God. I'm talking to somebody right now. You got belief, but you say, hold on. I need my faith strengthened. I still struggle at times when life gives me a bad hand. I'm going through the storms of life. Sometimes I doubt. You ought to say, God, help my unbelief. I'm not used to this situation. I'm not used to people getting on my nerves. I've been playing by the rules. I'm nice to everybody, but it seems like it's not going my way. Lord, get this unbelief out of me because I serve a God who does not fail. And so he said, help me get out. He said, help me with this. And then Jesus says, all right. He came and people started running to him. So he rebuked. The deaf and dumb spirit. Now, like what he said, he said, leave him and return no more. See, 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 that's power right there. He said, not only leave him, but don't even come back. Yes. And see, and see, you know what I'm learning? See, when you got power, when you got the anointing flowing from the top of your head to the soul, all you got to do is say it one time. Deaf and dumb spirit, leave. Don't come back. Uh -huh. See, you got many preachers out there that keep on repeating 20, 20 million times. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. Yes. Rebuke, rebuke, rebuke. Who are you saying that for? Right. Are you saying that for yourself? Or are you saying that because you need more confidence? Mm -hmm. But if you know God for yourself and you simply believe, all you have to do is say one time, say, devil, get away from here. And when we say, get away, don't come back. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I rebuke the devil and dumb spirit. Don't come back to him no more. And then it said, it convulsed him and threw him like he was dead because this type of evil spirit was not planned. This was not a puny, small, little type of demon. This was a demon who built him since childhood. And because it was with him since childhood. He had a strong hope and said, no, I'm not going to let him go without fighting. He's going to feel this pain. But the good news is it threw him down. It made him feel kind of weak. It made him look dead, but he wasn't dead. In other words, the evil spirit tried to fight him, tried to take him out. But the one name, Jesus, touched him and said, if you simply believe, all things are possible. And then the evil spirit came out of him and the young boy appeared dead. But then we got Jesus. He may fall down, but guess what? I'm standing right there, and I can pick him up. And when I pick him up, he's no longer looking dead, but rather he's alive. Why? Because somebody simply believed. Simply believed. Well, you know what? You said, that's cool, Rev. I feel you on that. Now, he gave me three so I can understand how I can simply believe. Here's your three, and we out of here. The first thing you need to understand why what happens when you simply believe, when you simply believe, you must be persistent. Mm. Uh, uh. In other words, God, I'm coming to you no matter what. God, I'm not going to take a night off. I'm not going to take a day off. I'm not going to let tiredness rain over my body. But God, I'm going to be persistent. Isn't that what the man did? The man walked through the crowd because they were arguing. They had a dispute. He brought them to the disciples. The disciples failed him. Church people failed him. Church leadership failed him. He could have went another direction. But he said, I came this far. I've come this far and I ain't turning back. That's my word for somebody right now. You came this far. Don't turn back because when you think about all that the Lord has done for you, all the trials he brought you through, all the tribulations he delivered you from, don't turn back, but keep on believing. Keep on being persistent. But check this out. Yeah, the man right here must have read earlier in chapter 5, he must have read about the woman with the issue of blood. You know about the woman with the issue of blood who, who had the issue for 12 long years, and it seems like she was an out, she was supposed to be an outcast. She, she was out there, but somehow she got in. Y'all miss that. She was out there, but because of her persistence, she got into Jesus. And she said, I spent all my money on doctors, and, and doctors couldn't help me out. But I saw a man named Jesus. All I had to do was touch the hem of his garment, and I shall be well. In other words, she was persistent. She said, I'm not going to allow this sickness. 
I'm not going to allow this illness to hold me back because this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. So I'm telling somebody right here, this is the day that the Lord has made. You go ahead and get your blessing. Go ahead and get your miracle. But only if you believe. Only if you're persistent. But, but I know what's happening. I'm looking at the little ones. I'm sorry. I talked to you about restaurant impossible. You know, I saw the show the other day, and it was a lady on the show who had an Italian business. She was like $600,000 in debt. And she said, I need a makeover. And her place was all messed up, but she got a makeover. I'm like this. And the owner and the guy who had a restaurant impossible said, do you trust me? And it became a conflict because he said, you need to have dinner service. And she said, I don't want to have dinner service. So he said, if you don't trust me, I'll close up right now and your place will fail. I know, Lauren, you saw the show. The show was really good. I'm going in. You relate to me. He said, I will close up this restaurant. We will pack up everything and go. He said, only if you trust me. If you trust me, just keep on keeping on. And she was so busy listening to her girlfriend. But somehow, I'm sure she had a hallelujah moment and she looked at the man and said, I trust you. And because she trusted him, she got a whole new restaurant. Money's coming in and now she can spend time with the family. Why? Because she was persistent. When a friend said no, she said yes. And because she said yes, she got a blessing. Yeah. Just like the man, just like the man, just like the man. The man got a blessing because he was persistent. But here's point number two. I'm love with point two. The second thing what happens here is when you simply obey, you start, you stop looking at the problem and looking at the solution. Okay, y'all didn't shine with See, see the problem here was the boy. The problem was the deaf and dumb spirit. He kept looking at the problem. But the father said, you know what? I stopped looking at the problem temporarily, and I looked towards the solution. That's my word for somebody right now. Whatever you're going through, don't keep looking at the problem because you in the house today. I double dare you and even triple dare you to look at the solution. In case you don't know, let me tell you who he is. His name is Jesus, the one who can raise up a dead man. His name is Jesus. The one that can put sight to the blind. His name is Jesus. The one that can give hearing to those who are deaf. His name is Jesus. The one who can make a way when there was no way. All you got to do is simply believe. But you know, in case you miss, can I give you my own personal testimony? My dad here, he's witness to it. In 2005, I got a phone call the day before Christmas. Before I was supposed to preach, found out that my mother was in the hospital, that she suffered from stage four ovarian cancer, not only the other diseases. And so my dad and I went down there. And the next day, we drove down there. We found out, talked to the doctor. I'm not telling a lot. My dad is right there. He's a testifier. But they said, we give your mother three months to live. I said, three months. I lost my mind. But then my cousin called me on the phone. And my cousin, not on cousin, said, your mother will live past in three months. I'm a preacher. He said, hold on. The doctor said three months. He said, but God ain't ready for your mother. He said, I told him. He said, I said, I went over. And I said, Auntie, keep on believing because God's got something for it. And don't you realize she beat three months? You missed that. She beat four months. She beat six months. She lasted for one year and some change. And then she said, baby, I'm ready to go. So I can look at the doctor and say, you looked at the problem, but I saw the solution. And the solution was Jesus. So then here's my last point. The last thing is when you simply believe, you become more aggressive with your actions. Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait a minute. More aggressive. The Bible says that Jesus said this power can go out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Hold on, Jesus. These are the disciples here. They, they with you, so they don't need to fast. But Jesus, you don't understand. You got to go back to the Gospel of Matthew. Because the Gospel of Matthew said, if you believe, you can tell this mountain move from here and there. And it will move. In other words, you got to have power. You got to have belief. So, so when you're fasting, you got to fast for a state of purpose. Your prayer, a couple with your fasting, has got to be purposeful. Because if they don't line up, guess what? You won't get your miracle. But I double dare you to go ahead and say, I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast. And I don't care what happens because I know when I turn it over to God, all things are possible for those who believe. But guess what? You missed it. Let me 
help you out. Let me help you out. I got a story to tell you. Now, I'm right here. We out here. I believe it was in 19, um, 1982 when I was playing basketball, and my dad was the assistant coach at that time. And, and I thought I had it made because my dad was, was the coach. I thought I had it made. I thought I could just come and not really do anything. Well, one particular time, I was doing basketball drills. And he probably may have forgotten his laugh over there. And, I was, and every time you miss a layup, the coach would say, run some laps. I kept missing so many laps that, I mean, missing so many layups that day. I kept running laps. I was getting tired. I was getting irritated. And I broke down in tears. I went to my dad and said, it's not playing. Believe that, you know what my dad said? He said, this ain't a place for crybabies. You can go home. So I went home, but guess what? I also had a basketball court in my backyard, so I kept on practicing my layups. I didn't play basketball no more, but guess what? I went on a playground, and every time I went on a playground, I didn't miss any layups back then. When I went on a playground, my game was on. Why? Because I kept on practicing, because I had to get aggressive and do what the coach said. So what does the coach says here? I'm glad you have the coach says simply believe. That's all it is. Simply believe. I, I know you want to clap your hands and run around, but that's great, but simply believe. I, I know you want to tell everybody about how about this sermon, but all you gotta do is simply believe. I, it's not rocket science, it's, it's simply believe. What does believe mean? It means to have trust in. So, so if you trust in God to do what you ask God to do, just sit back. In other words, you ain't got to do it by yourself. Just sit back. Y'all miss that? Just, just sit back. The Father that here didn't have to do anything but simply believe. Because God says, I'll take over the process. Let me say that again. Do what you got to do. And when you reach your limit, let God step in. I like that. Yes. Let go and let God. God can do everything that you're supposed to do. But when you reach your limit, that's when I'll step in. And I'll take care of the process. For all you got to do is simply believe. Give me to God in prayer.